Are you ready for a headache? Because we're doing math. Hey everybody, welcome back to Mrs. Rattlecan's house. I am James and today we are talking about attic ventilation and the problems that come along with it. Uh, we have, for those of you who are not in the know, uh, Mrs. Rattlecan and I have bought a 1955 ranch style house. We do have a couple of things that are a little bit different. We don't have 12 inch overhangs on our soffits. We have 18 inch overhangs on our soffits. Our soffits have been closed in. And at some point, uh, somebody put siding up on the side of the house and uh, covered our soffit areas with aluminum stuff. Ventilation. The thoughts on ventilation have changed over the years. National code now says that uh, you take the number of square feet in your attic, uh, not the square feet of living space, but if your attic space contains a garage, like ours do, that's common to the attic, you have to count that. If it covers a porch area that is common with the attic, like ours, you have to count that as well. If you have at least three feet between the top of the ceiling joist and the peak of your roof, you can use the one in 300 rule, which is what we have done to determine how much ventilation in net free area you need. Confused? Yeah, it's stupid. It's not stupid. It's just a little complicated and a little convoluted. So I'm going to walk you through what we have discovered on the house and what we think we're going to do and at the same time say if you know of a better way if you know of a solution let us know um, put it down in the you know, put your comment down below the sermon notes um, you know we love to hear from you guys because this is this is fun so let's do some math first of all our house is 2,200 square feet. It's a ranch, so we have 2,200 square feet of attic space. Common to that attic, we have a garage. Our house was not built with a firewall between the area above the garage and the attic. We also have a Florida room or a porch uh, that also has a common attic space that is connected up to the attic. So we have to count all of that. 2,200 square feet of house, 480 square feet of garage, 170 square feet of porch space, and that gives us a attic space of 2,850 square feet. This is all connected. This is all nice and roastingly hot at the moment, I can assure you. So if we are going to use the 1 in 300 rule, air handler is going to come on downstairs because that's what it does. Oh, and it's like 93 degrees outside today on towards the end of September. <clears throat> We're going to use the 1 in 300 rule. We're going to divide that. That gives me 9.5 square feet of ventilation space I need. If we're going to use the 1 in 300 rule, I need to have that space evenly distributed between the lower part of the attic space and the higher part of the attic space. That means that when that attic space heats up, and that air starts to rise, it has a way to draw in cooler air, and that way you get this nice little convection thing going on, and you don't get this like a pressure cooker like it is like when we got up in there. We'll talk about that in a minute. We're going to divide that by two. That means I need 4.75 square feet of net free ventilation area for the bottom. I'm only working on the bottom part of it right now. Now if we multiply that by 144, that's going to give me how much I need in net free inches. I need 684 net free inches of ventilation space on the lower part of my house. Now I know you're asking, what the heck is net free inches? I'm glad you asked. 
net free inches if you think about it like this. If I'm going, if I need to ventilate and I'm going to cut a hole this big in my soffit, just a hole, then I'm going to have this whole area available for the movement of air. There's a problem with that, especially here in Ohio, and that problem's called raccoons, um, or birds, or vermin, or something like that. So you have to put something over that to restrict the movement of creatures in and out of there. And when you do that, you cut down on the amount of air that can move through that space. The smaller the holes, the more the restriction is. Our house has what are called double five ventilated soffit panels. And those soffit panels have teeny tiny holes in them. And the uh, industry standard for a double five, the net free inches, how much air, how much square inches of airflow you get in that, in a double five at 12 inches long is 6.2 net free inches. Not a whole lot because you have a bunch of little bitty holes and there's material in between those holes that restricts the movement of air. It took me a little bit to get my, my single brain cell wrapped around that. Now our soffits are 18 inches long. And I took liberty and used some old school math and just extrapolated, well, if that's 12 inches long, at 18 inches long, it's going to be that. I don't know that that is the exact number. There could be some higher level mathematical concepts that I'm not grasping at this moment. But we're going to run with that, okay? I went around and I counted the number of soffits that I have. Uh, soffit vent areas, those double five vents that I have on the underside of our house. Now there are one or two of them that I cannot get to because they are, there's that tarp uh, on, not a tarp, it's a, I don't know, we call it the circus tent. Um, and without actually detaching that from the house I can't get to those so I'm not counting those. But I've walked all the way around the house, and I have figured that I have got 20 of those. And at 9.3 net free inches per, uh, um, per area, per double five, that gives me, I have 186 square inches of ventilation. Of... 684 that I'm supposed to have. Not a smart guy. I know that that doesn't add up. There's a discrepancy between these two numbers. There's another problem. I have taken off one of those sets of double five ventilated soffit panels and I found this. That the area underneath that uh, soffit vent is not cut out all the way. In fact, it borders on a joist. I don't know who put the soffit up. I don't know if it was a high bid job or if it was a low bid job or if it was just put up by somebody that just didn't give a rip. And so now uh, I have 9.3 net free inches of ventilation area able to move air into an area that is actually not that big. So this number is actually, in my mind, misleading. So, what do you do? The interim, I think the short range answer to what we're going to do is we're going to pull those double five ventilated soffit areas. We're going to pull those open we're going to uh, cut out as much of the old wooden soffit as we can get to so that we can get as much airflow going through there as we can for right now. We'll have to do 20 of those. I have to do that 20 times, which means 20 times of bending the J channel down, wrestling match trying to get the aluminum out of there. It's usually tagged up on one corner that you kind of have to wiggle and bend to get out of there. 
cut that area open and then attempt to replace uh, that soffit as, in as nice and neat a manner as you can and then push that J channel back up under there. Once we get that done, we're going to have to go uh, up into the attic and we're going to have to install baffles in many cases in two joists because those holes span a joist space. So we're going to have to put baffles in two to get as much airflow in there as we can and then we can blow our insulation in and that's what we're going to do for right now. Uh, the long term solution for this, at least in our minds, is at a later date and we're just going to end up pulling the gutters down, pulling the fascia off, pulling that soffit off, redoing it all and doing it correctly because again this number is woefully inadequate compared to what we're supposed to have and I don't like that but the other thing that I don't like is that in order to get here that's gonna cost that's money and we're on a budget we're on a budget like everybody else um, and so we are going to start planning to get this into this at a later date so if you have an idea if I'm not seeing something because you know I'm not a siding guy I'm not a gutter guy uh, you know this is not my this is not my bag um, it's you know I you know this is what I do this is this is where I feel comfortable um, so if I'm missing something let me know point me to a video uh, put it in a comment down below in the sermon notes. I'd really like to know because I've got some time here, but I have to get this. I have we have to get to this as quick as we can because uh, HVAC is going in next week. Um, there's some wiring issues that need to be fixed pretty quick, and then baffles are going in, and then insulation goes in because uh, we're in September, and even though it's 93 today, give us a couple of weeks, and it could be cold. And uh, I don't want to have a house with no insulation when it's cold outside. So that's what's going on. Um, I hope to hear from you guys. Have a good one. Cheers. If you enjoyed watching this episode of Mrs. Rattlecan's House, consider checking out this video. Be sure to subscribe to us on YouTube and to get the latest updates on our progress, like us on Facebook. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again soon. Perhaps we should have some wine.